Good afternoon. The last time we have shown, or I have shown, tried to show to you that light is radiation and the visible light is just part of the radiation. And radiation travels as an electromagnetic wave. And I've shown you the wave nature of light. I have used that the light that we see, our eyes are only sensitive to a very small spectrum of the radiation that is emitted from the sun, by the sun. And we have seen that we see a whole spectrum of light between 400 and 700 nanometers. And this is polychromatic light, light of many colors. Okay. Uh, but if it's polychromatic, it usually appears white to us. But if we take it apart, by using a grating, for example, we can dissect it into its individual wavelengths. And then you see that each wavelength has a color, because we see in colors. And with this, you have monochromatic light. Many different wavelengths. Each of them represents monochromatic light, one wavelength, one color. Okay, promise is color. All right, so, uh, and I've shown you the uh, wave nature by introducing you to the double slit experiment uh, with monochromatic light. With polychromatic light, of course, you won't see anything, because where there is with monochromatic light, there is a high intensity or a low intensity, there's high intensity for another wavelength. So that's why it doesn't work with polychromatic light. But with monochromatic light, you can show that light, this monochromatic light, interferes with each other. If you put it through two slits, through two slits, and when you put, get an interference pattern, and I give you the example of water uh, waves interfering with each other by throwing two pebbles in a very uh, still body of water, and you see they interfere constructively and destructively. And with this, you have seen that light behaves as a wave. And so I have a laser here. This laser is monochromatic. It's green. It's 532, na or 532 nanometers. That's the wavelength of this baby, okay? If you have a red laser, it's 612 nanometers. And we can have absorption. Matter can absorb light. That's what happens with your clothing. Why I see this here red and this here yellow is because it absorbs anything but red, anything but yellow. So my eyeballs see the, the yellow, uh, yellow and red light that comes towards it. Of course, there are many kinds of yellow. There are many kinds of red. So this is a mixture of different wavelengths. So these dyes not only absorb one wavelength, they absorb or not absorb or let's go through uh, or reflect a larger range of wavelengths. And I want to demonstrate this to you today. We have here colored solutions. You see it goes red, yellow, green, blue. So this absorbs mostly red, this, is absorbed, uh, this lets mostly red through, absorbs everything else of the visible spectrum, this lets mostly yellow through, absorbs everything else, this lets green through, absorbs everything else, and this lets blue through, absorbs everything else. Otherwise, the waves wouldn't come back to our eye and we would see that this color, all right? So we take monochromatic light, no, polychromatic light, white light. We have a white light lamp here, we could show that. I'm in the picture, you are in pictures. Uh, so, so this is the lamp here, and then we have a focusing lens here to focus this a little bit, and then we filter out we put a solution in between here, we filter out certain wavelengths, they get absorbed, and some of them get left, uh, let through. And then we put it through a grating, that grating is here, and we're going to project this to here. So if you don't have anything in there, we put the light on and have the grating, what should we see? The whole spectrum of visible light from what colors? From red, from infrared, long wavelengths, to blue, to close to the UV, okay? That's about 400 nanometers. So if you could switch that light up there off, please, off the periodic table, and the rest we get from carrot. So first of all, we want to observe the pattern. Not yet. All right, there it is. Can you see it? So let's project it up there. You see, there is, is, you see it better down here, actually. The projection takes a little, little bit away. Uh -huh. We're dealing with lenses and optics, they, they swallow some. It's red here, blue here, green here, yellow and orange here, and sort of greenish blue here. Right? You see it up there? Yeah, now you see it pretty, pretty well. Okay, so what happens? What color are we going to use for first? Red, huh? What happens if I put red in there? Red in the path and then diffract it? What colors would you see? A red solution. What would you see? Mostly red, isn't it? Red? Everything else gets absorbed, otherwise it wouldn't be looking red for us, to, uh, to our eyes. Let's put that in there, please. And sure enough, you see red, and then you can see it here, and a little bit of orange, because they are different reds, so they are mixtures of certain wavelengths. But most of the other spectrum is absorbed by the solution of the visible spectrum. It just lets this through, and this white appears to our eyes as red. Now let's use the yellow. Uh -huh. The yellow is obviously a combination of a little bit of green, of yellow, of orange, and of red. It's sort of where does it absorb? Let's see where it absorbs. Let's take it out one more time, just a little bit. Uh -huh. It absorbs the, the blues here. Right? So you see only this here, this makes it appear as yellow to our eyes. It's a uh, combination of wavelengths. It's a series of wavelengths that make that color. That's why we have different kinds of reds. And now let's take green. So green. Uh huh. Green takes out quite a bit of the blue, quite a bit of the red, but it leaves a little bit of red, yellow, but mostly the green is uh, not absorbed. It shines through the solution because the solution appears green to us. And last but not least, we're going to use the blue solution. Uh huh. Sure enough, that blue is a combination of dark blue and a little bit of green. The rest is not let through. So there's something leaking in the bottom here. Uh, <laughs> the rest is not let through, and this shows you uh, that our eyes don't lie. If it's blue, it just reflects back the blue wavelengths and maybe a little bit of green, which makes it look blue to us. Thank you very much, Karen. We can have the lights back on. Okay. Now, we had, this was the spectrum we just seen, and when we put a blue solution in there, we see mostly this here. When we put a red solution in there, we see something like this here. This will be all this we haven't seen. It depends on what kind of red it is, of course. Now, let me ask you a question. You have your windows in your house or in your apartment, and so the windows absorb certain radiation. I mean, there are people who sit in front, in, in front of a window, a closed window in a bus and put sunscreen on there because they think the UV light would get through there. You get the tanning is the UV light. You get hot, that's the infrared light, but you don't get the tan by sitting behind glass, all right? So that's already a hint I'm giving you. Uh, today, we are counting the eye clicker. So I, this is the absorption spectrum of different kinds of glass. Would it be, so that means it absorbs all these wavelengths here. Would it be this one, the absorption spectrum of window glass? Would it be this one, or would it be that one? So this is the spectrum that you see here. Of, so obviously the wavelengths are from a uh, lower here, from UV to higher wavelengths to here. So why don't you think about this and give me your answer, please.
Don't forget to click in. We are counting today. From now on. And I will have on B space then a tab which says I click it, it will happen next week, and then you can see that you, you're in there. Okay? Even if you don't have your registered, your I click it registered, I will have you. Okay? Because the iClick has a number, but I don't know who you are. So in order to get credit, you need to go to iClicker.com and register your iClick. So we have 427. Let's see what the answer is. So the answer is that the spectrum, the absorption spectrum of window glass, a majority says it's, a, it's, it's number one. Some say it's this one, and some say you want to sit in the dark, actually. No, no, never mind. That's this one, okay? Uh, why don't you uh, discuss this with each other and think maybe we can come to more, a more comprehensive, more unified answer and look at this here. So obviously, it has to let this spectrum through here. Uh, otherwise, you won't see color or you won't see anything. If it blocks everything, you're sitting in the dark. Actually, your window would appear dark, okay? Uh, wouldn't be a window. Um, okay, why don't you discuss it with each other? Come on, let's go discuss it with each other. So obviously the wavelength is increasing here, okay? <laughs> yes, sir. Everything here, everything past this is visible. Everything past this is visible. Everything past this is visible. So it's an absorption spectrum. It takes absorption. Yes, yes. Sir. That's UV and this is IR. <laughs> okay, make sure you click in. I still need a couple of hundred. Click in, click in now. <laughs> well, three already have left. <laughs> so we get down to four, three. No, you got two more in. Okay, so there's one missing. Just uh, for your information. That is. So let's see. Yeah, we're getting better. Excellent. And some wasting the tuition money. Uh, <laughs> okay, but it's a nice warm place here. It's pretty good. Uh, so it needs to let the spectrum in there. And this is the blue side, and far blue is UV, and the far red is the infrared. Okay, so you put this in here, uh-huh, UV. So if I have this here, this will let it through. But this one cuts out already this part. You only would see very funny colors, you know, that people would look funny. And this one, you would sit in the dark, because in order to have total absorption of the light, you would have to have a black window, all right? Uh, so the answer was, very rightfully so, one. Now today, I had spent the whole lecture on convincing you that radiation and light, as we know it, is travels in form of a wave. It's electromagnetic radiation that travels as an electric component and a magnetic component and travels in form of a wave. Now today, I'm going to convince you from the opposite, uh, of the opposite. Okay, no, I haven't lost my marbles. Uh, at least that's what I think. Uh, <laughs> so people were very happy. They understood how optics work, how light can be explained, and so on and so on. And they were pretty confident that they knew everything, just like we are confident that we are the smartest that there are. Okay, at this time, yes, but don't count it. I mean, be assured the like, next guys will have new discoveries. They will be not smarter than us, but they will work differently and they will make new discoveries. That's especially, especially what we call progress. And this will go on. It will be more and more difficult to make new discoveries. At least that's what we think. But next generations might have a totally different way of thinking. So let's not think that we are the smartest they are. There will be always smarter people coming after us. Um, so, and one of these smart people was Max Planck. And he, sort of found something which was, could not be explained with classical uh, theory of matter, with classical physics. So let me give you an example. I mean, he, he's been talking about black body radiation. That's an idealized matter. It's a matter which is independent of what it is, and it, is, it only uh, can emit or absorb heat, but it cannot reflect heat or anything, all right? That's black body. But I'll give you an example that you sort of understand what this guy found. Uh, who knows what a blacksmith is? Okay, ferry, also called. Uh, blacksmith. So we have a watch one working, or any iron uh, forging, yeah, okay? So these guys, they take a piece of iron, metal, and they hold it in either in a flame or in a, in a coal, and the coal is red glowing, and then they heat it up. And so they can heat it up, if they pull it out after a while, it's still black, and, but you can touch it, you better don't touch it. It's still very hot, it emits energy, okay? And so it has absorbed this energy, now it emits it. Now, you leave this longer in the coal, then suddenly it becomes red, a little bit red glowing, so that means, uh-huh, this is hotter now. And then you leave it longer, it becomes bright red glowing, and then it becomes yellow glowing even, if you have it hotter. So that means that you have an emission spectrum, and that emission spectrum looks different at each temperature, because I, I see a different color. So and what this guy found in 1901 is when he idealized this black body radiation, if this is our emission spectrum, so depending on the temperature of the, of the body, it emits a different spectrum. That's what I just told you. I told you the different colors of hot metal. That's what this is. And so until then, they uh, thought uh, that the uh, emission would be increasing constantly with energy. Okay? And it would go to infinite, infinite and if you have very small, uh, very large wavelengths, nothing would happen. Okay? So it's a, linear, a straight relationship, a linear relationship. And, but they found these maxima and they were totally flabbergasted. They couldn't explain this. And with this, the age of quantum mechanics of the understanding of quantum, of the quantum was created. Because what this guy Planck says, this light that's emitted must travel in some kind of packages, must be packages of light, and they must follow some kind of whole number ratio. And in, two, in uh, 1905, Einstein, he came along before that, but he thought about it and he said, you know, if the energy, the change in energy of a body that gives off radiation is a, a, a whole number multiple, n1234, times that package of light. So it comes in packages. And that package of light, we call the smallest unit, is a quantum, one quantum. And this, the energy is then E equals N times H times nu, that's the change. And H is the Planck's constant. He called this constant it's a, a natural constant and has a value of two seconds. It's a fixed value. And it's multiples of uh, uh, whole numbers times the Planck constant times nu is the frequency of that radiation. So with this, there was the, that was the birth of quantum mechanics. And let me 
explain this a little more to you, a little more in detail. Now, if you have, let's say you have a flashlight and you have a filter, and this filter cuts the intensity of the polychromatic light in half, all right? So you have one half of the intensity there afterwards. Now, you put the next filter in, cuts it again in half. So you have one fourth of the intensity, and you could do this. And this is what we call a Gedanken experiment. It's actually an English word. It comes from German. It means a thought experiment of thought. We make this in our mind, that experiment. But you actually could do this when you cut the light down, chop it down. You actually, at the end, you see every now and then, blimp, 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 you see one flash of light. There's another one. There's another one. And our eyes are actually sensitive to see the smallest unit of light, one quantum. We are not. We can see atoms, but we can record small flashes of light. And that's the smallest unit of light and energy. You see, that's related. Light and energy. E equals n times uh, e equals n times delta e equals n times h times nu. Energy is related to the frequency. Is related to the wavelengths because c is what nu times lambda. Isn't that right? Okay. So let me explain this a little bit more to you. Remember the piece of, of carbon I have? I can chop it down, chop it down, chop it down, chop it down, chop it down. But I only can chop it till I have one atom left. If I chop that atom, it's not carbon anymore. Okay, that's the same with light. You can chop it down till you have one quantum of light left. And you actually can see that. So that's the birth of quantum mechanics. And so the energy of that photon that you see is h, that is that constant, it's just a number, okay, times the frequency of the light. And the frequency is because you know the frequency, you also know the wavelengths. If I give you the wavelengths, you can calculate the frequency, with this you can get me the energy, and vice versa. Okay, so now Einstein had another experiment that he, I think he didn't do it, but he explained it. That's called the photoelectric effect. And with this, he has shown that light must travel in packages, in quanta. So if you imagine a piece of metal, metal conducts electricity. So metal has the electrons, a specific metal. It has the, it has the, the uh, uh, nucleus, and it has the electrons. And in metals, some of the electrons are not as strongly bound to the metal, because you can, that's how the metal conducts, they move around in, in, the, in the metal the electrons. That's how they conduct electricity. But you also could imagine that you can take off an electron, or rip off an electron, and then you have an electron that is independent of the metal that flies through space, or through the, through the room. Now, if I shine light on certain metals, these are specific metals, but these are metals, I shine red light on this. Light, light of one frequency has a certain energy. Nu is red to 612 nanometers, E equals H times nu. I have the energy, I can calculate the energy. All right? So nothing happens. Why? Because I didn't give it enough energy to rip out that electron. I need to make this instable, that the electron goes away. So if I take, so I need more energy, isn't that right? What kind of light would you suggest? With more energy. So we have red light, what would have more energy? So I take green light, boom, there we go. That light has enough energy to dislocate that electron from the metal, and then the metal travels away and carries some of the energy of the light with it as kinetic energy. Now there's a certain amount of energy that you need, and this amount of energy is specific for any specific metal. That amount you need to get this electron away from the, from the metal, to ionize it. And if you have more energy than that, then the electron will carry that excess energy as kinetic energy. So now, if I would use another, even higher energetic beam, what would that be? Blue, let's use blue. Aha, uh -huh, there you see. You need it only a certain amount to dislodge it, and the rest of the energy is given to the kinetic energy. See, this is longer, that means it has more kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is one half the mass times v squared, v is the velocity. And the mass of the electron is always the same, and so the velocity is high. E equals one half mv squared. You all have heard that, okay, most of you. So the kinetic energy is a function, of course, of that metal. So we need this, if this is the energy and this is the wavelength, okay, what would be the wavelengths, uh, the frequency, not the wavelength, the frequency, we increasing the frequency, that means we decreasing the wavelengths and we increase the energy. So there's a certain amount of energy needed to dislodge that electron out of the metal, and then the rest is given as kinetic energy. So if you have a wavelength here, for example, your kinetic energy would be here, right? So this would be for one metal, and we call this the work function, or the initial frequency that you need for that metal. Each metal has a specific work function, or initial frequency that, that you need to dislodge that electron. Are you with me? I will make a nice demonstration for you soon. Karen is right, just coming here. So the energy of that photon, we know is h times nu, we already understood it, you said we need high energy, we go uh, higher frequency, and with this, you have the kinetic energy is that initial energy of the photon minus that work function, that is that energy here, that you need to dislodge it. So that is h times mu minus h times mu zero. You need a specific wavelength for each metal to dislodge that electron. And no, 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 not that. <laughs> and so this is a potential well. This is the work function to get this out of the metal, out of the potential well. This is a physicist will understand that, and some of you. So it is not enough for the red to get it out of the potential well, that electron. But the, the uh, blue, uh, I'm sorry, the green will get it out of the well and will impart kinetic energy to it. And 